Hi, I am going to teach you how to love physics. That happens when you learn how to understand physics. Last time I finished with a definition of a vector as a quantity uniquely identified by a magnitude and a direction. Today I am going to provide conceptual understanding of basic operations of vectors. These operations include addition and subtraction of vectors and multiplication of vectors by a number. Addition of two things is essentially asking for the result of the combination of the two things. Excuse me for taking you back to first grade, but remember that the addition of two numbers gives a resultant number that is the combination of the two numbers. Similarly, addition of two vectors is asking for one resultant vector that is equivalent to the combined action of the other two. So what is this resultant vector? Well, as implied, the addition of two vectors asks for one vector that represents the combined action of the other two vectors. Say I apply displacement A to this red ball and then apply displacement B. So I first move the red ball the distance and direction associated with A and then from that position I move it the distance and direction associated with B. The resultant displacement can be traced from the initial position to the final position since that itself is a displacement associated with its own specific distance and direction. So vector A plus vector B equals what I will call vector C. Now let me introduce some notation. I will write a vector that is the quantity associated with a specific magnitude and direction as the identifying name with an arrow on top. I will write the magnitude of that vector with only the identifying name and no arrow. So vector A equals magnitude A at angle theta from the horizontal and vector B equals magnitude B and angle phi from the horizontal. Most textbooks will represent vectors by bold face print, while most professors will represent vectors in the way I am doing it, by writing them with the arrow on top. If this last equation looks suspect to you from your knowledge of geometry, now I can explain. Writing this equation with the arrows above the vector names means that I am adding the vectors, that is, I am including both the magnitudes and directions of A and B in the summation. So it is true, the combined displacement of vector A and vector B gives the resultant vector displacement C. But if I write that equation with the arrows on top, that means I'm simply adding the lengths of the vectors together. And that equation, without the arrows on top, from basic geometry, is wrong. So remember, addition of vectors must include the combination of both data that makes up a vector. That is, both the magnitude and direction. Conceptually, that is shown by moving the tail of one of the vectors to the head of the other. The resultant vector is the one that completes the triangle, directed from the tail of the first to the head of the second. Now I will describe multiplication of a vector by a number. First, it is important to note that there is a name for quantities that, like numbers, are defined by only one piece of data. These are scalars. Some examples of scalars are mass and temperature. It is a word you'll see a lot if you are studying physics, so I'm going to be using it too. Multiplication of a vector by a scalar is basically the addition of the same vector several times. Say I multiply a vector a by 3. That means I add a to itself three times. Using the convention I established for addition, I lay the tail of vector a onto the head of another vector a three times. The resultant vector is simply the one vector that draws from the tail of the first A to the head of the last. As you can see, the resultant vector has the same direction as A, and a length three times that of A. So a simple convention for multiplication of a vector by a scalar is to simply multiply the magnitude by the scalar. Multiplication by a negative scalar brings a little more complexity into the picture. The negative sign actually reverses the direction of the vector. So negative 1 times vector a is simply a, a in the opposite direction. You can draw that by pointing the head where the tail was 
and tail where the head was. Negative 3 times a is simply a vector 3 times as long as a in the opposite direction as a. Subtraction of vectors follows from both these concepts. If I want to subtract vector b from vector a, there are two things going on. First, notice that there is a minus sign before vector b. This is equivalent to multiplying b by negative 1. So the vector that you are adding to vector a is negative b, a vector with length b in the opposite direction as b. You then need to combine this negative b with a, so you draw the tail of negative b to the head of a. You then complete the triangle starting from the tail of a to the head of negative b. In this video, I described the concepts behind basic addition of vectors but I did not go over how to actually add those sums in practice. I'll do that next time. First I needed to provide you some conceptual understanding about how vectors add, and then next time I will be able to detail exactly how you add these sums together. So once again, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section.